Dandelion Song here, and we are in Paris. And I've talked to you a few times about, um, I want to show you this mermaid. I want to show you this mermaid. And I do have a video where she's drawn out. And um, I just love stuff like this. I, I also want to bring you to, I, I found um, in the, Brit there's a British Museum of Medieval Manuscript. I think that's what it's called. It's been a while since I've looked at it. And I saved the links. And they have um, other interesting things. I'm sure they have stuff about mermaids. So we'll all search there to show you more about what I know about mermaids. And I'll try to dig up what I've already read. And, um, um, you know, we'll just learn more. I'm sure there's more we can all learn. Mermaids are very uh, important. Um, Timothy Berger uh, did a video recently. I know he's been doing some artistic videos. And he apologizes for that. I think artistic videos are okay. Well, he did a video about um, fish uh, being etymolo etymologically, ooh, that's a cool word, uh, tied to feet. And I have seen that. I, I was um, just about to do a decode of Alice in Wonderland with Johnny Depp. There's a lot of really interesting things in there. Um, anyway, she has, she has a fish footman. And so there's just codes in there about fish equals feet and... Anyway, we have one of the biggest chains is uh, Starbucks, and it, supposedly it started, it probably did start in um, Seattle. But the thing that a lot of people don't realize is they think that we live in a free market where something comes, something starts little and gets big because the people love it. And that's not the case. The, something starts little and gets big because uh, insiders run it and because the symbolism is supposed to be dominant so of course we have seen isis drawn everywhere and we know that um the starbucks maiden if you call them on a color a maiden um she looks a lot like this the statue of liberty and some other very prominent um symbolism that we deal with and she's obviously fish footed uh so um, the other thing I need to, I want to mention about these this um, this double this double serpent leg is that um, that's the that's the way that Typhon looked and there's pictures of Typhon wearing the um, the hat that starts with a P whose name I can never remember that kind of hat and that's the Santa hat and um, anyway this symbolism and these characters are very important still today. The other major double-legged figure is uh, Abraxas, which is the source of the um, magical spoken word, which is um, also associated with Enoch. Now, I have talked, I, and I, I've talked to, and I do respect the view of different people who have studied the Enoch-Abraxas connection, and there are people who think that they're, they are two different people. So we just take all those views into consideration, but um, Enoch very well might be one of these um, double serpent-legged um, characters. Now, if we try to think from more of a galactic citizen type of view, just because someone has two serpent legs doesn't necessarily mean, mean they're bad. It means they're a different species. Okay, so we do need to judge discern, not judge. Uh, let's talk about the difference between judging and discerning. Judging is where you automatically condemn someone based on what you see. Like you're like, oh, they're lost or they don't have a chance or whatever they say isn't worth listening to because of this. That's judging. Discerning is where you think, well, they said this and then they said that and they do have two serpent legs. So I am leaning towards that I probably shouldn't listen to them. However, I'm going to um, keep sorting out the information. That's discernment. So that's the difference between judging and discerning. I do believe that discerning is very important. Judging ties you. It shackles you to, to it shackles you and blinds you at the same time. Okay, well anyway, I have a Paris tilted here like this because this is the best way to see this mermaid. And you're probably looking at it going, I still don't see the mermaid, Nandeline. Now I've showed you the lady here with her head. Here's her hair. She has all this. She also she she could see for seer her as having a Marge Simpson type of hairdo, one of these royal updos, or you could see her in terms of the mermaid. You could see all of these flowing lines being her hair, um, and her arms are the river, 
And I've showed you the one where she's holding a weapon, more of the Princess Leia type of person who has this uh, hermaphroditic aspect to her right here. We've talked about that before. Now, this mermaid person, um, I do want to decode this. I want to understand why Starbucks is a mermaid and I want to understand how, what that has to do with the life of Melusine in France. France has so many amazing mysteries in it. I wish I didn't learn American history, which was all Disney anyway. I wish I learned French history and like real French history. So uh, some different sources that I have found, and hopefully I'll find some of them, regard the Melusine um, uh, information not as myth, but as fact. And there, in some sources, they say that there were 30 eyewitnesses that sh saw her shapeshift um, into a flying amphibious dragon with two mermaid type of dragon legs. And she was uh, furious with her husband at the time because he uh, not only defied their agreement that he wouldn't um, walk in on her bath, but then he um, talked about her behind her back. And you just don't want to do that to a woman, and you especially don't want to do that to a woman who can change into a dragon. So anyway, she was behind him when he said that, apparently, to his uh, court. I guess he was a royal or a duke or something like that. I can't remember now. And so anyway, I guess uh, she flew into such a rage she couldn't help it. She had to, she f literally flew into her dragon form and, f and delivered a threat to him and his descendants having to do with walking underneath her sign. Um, and then she flew away. Supposedly she took her daughters to uh, Avalon, which um, a lot of people now believe that that is Glastonbury. Well, so there's that story. So I do want to, you know, dig more into that. I don't think it's the most urgent thing, except for that Starbucks also has that green color that is associated with Ebola and other kind of health threats. It's a coded, it's a coded cabalistic color, not saying that the color green itself is bad. However, um, cause trees are green and trees are good. However, because of the way, the way that vision works, the reason why trees are green is because they reject the wavelength of green. Okay. So that's why they're green. So all that symbolism is important in our world. So if you're green, that means you reject the wavelength of green. So that therefore you reflect it. Okay. I want to show you this lady. Now, um, I'm a little confused about where her arms are because because here's her head over here and she has more or less the same torso as the Eiffel Tower man, which has the Orion in it. And here's one of her arms. I have it tilted because you can see it better this way than you can straight on, but I'll show you straight on in a minute. So this is, this could be her, this would be her right arm. See? Right here. Um, this is the face of Isis. Oh, no, wait, this is the face of Isis. Let me show you. Here's, here's Isis's forehead and, uh, Isis's nose. If you zoom out, they draw a yellow line right here. It goes to here, come back. And then here is her mouth. They, they take a little time to draw this little extra yellow mouth right here. And here's her chin. And we know that she's the spoken word and the mouth. Now we know more about what they mean by mouth and the flow of the mouth. And we can see that there's kind of a flow of a interstate here. So this would be their man-made river that they put right here. But we also have the Sien, that's another river. And I'd like, I'd love it. See, if I had a little quick Gematria counter, I could just put it up on this page and Gematria Sien, because I would like to know, Sien, I'd like to know those things on the fly, really. If I had a Gematria counter, you know, it'd be great. I could just like have an app, I'd just click on, I'd right click on this, and then it would pop up that Gematria for me right here on this page. So there's probably some computer genius out there listening to me thinking, what should my next project be? Hmm. And then they're going to say, oh, that is a good idea, Dandelion. You know, in my life, in my regular life, I give away million dollar ideas every day because it depends on who's next to me. And then I'll just get an idea and I know that the idea is for them. So I give it to them because I'm not really huge on following through on those things. Well, there's her arm. Okay, here's her, here's her, uh, this would be her right arm, and then her left arm. 
could either be the the river or it could be this or it could be in time lapse okay so here's her left arm it comes over here something like this um, down to Saint Sulpice is over here then here's her torso and then here's one of her legs this will be I guess if she's if if she's facing forward this would be her left leg comes over here I'm gonna follow it out for you so that you can see the fin so I'm gonna trace the fin right here so this is her leg comes right here goes right here goes over here and comes back so she has the opera on her fin let's see what's on the other side over here um, Las Mobile is over there. All right, then this leg, here we go, to the other leg, to the other part of her mermaid self, comes over here, has like a university here. She's, what's the name of the university? Oh, maybe I'm wrong. All right, well, it comes over here. And here's her other fin. It's also totally possible that her legs go up because you can see right here. Watch this. Oh gosh, I don't even know if you can see this. You're just going, Dandelion, would you just please draw it for me? I can't see it. Here's, okay, here's her right leg. So it comes up like this and it can come up here. You could see that, right? So there's there are fins along the way. So it could stop here or it could continue. And here's kind of a you know, a very thin like looking fin up here. Yeah, I guess I guess if you see her the river as her arms, she would be holding her fins pretty much, you know, as it is. See? Here's the, here's the fin, as it is in the in the logo. All right. Well, um, I think I am gonna take this side on because it. Oh, let's see. A little. Let me let me show you from the top. It's a little harder to see from the top. Here's her head. Here's her body. Here's one of her legs. Comes over here, makes a fin, and here's another one of her legs, and comes over here and makes a fin over here.
All right. Well, we're back again in Paris. This is we are we, we flew into a spherical panorama on the top of this building, and this building is inside the hermaphroditic aspects of this person right here. And I covered that in another video. But I just had to show you this. Isn't this nice? Look, you get to look around Paris with no plane tickets. This is the train station we talked about in another video. Um, the video where I showed you the woman in Paris who was holding a weapon. All of these shapes are meaningful. All of these headings are meaningful. I can't remember. I think I found these headings. I don't remember what they are. This is looking upward on the body of this person that's drawn here. So this would be the heart. And this line right here, I don't know, this isn't a direct, let me, this is not a direct, uh, like I can't s seem to cite right down here. So if you could cite right down here, straight ahead would be Stonehenge. And if you could cite directly the other way, which I don't know if I'm going to, yeah, this is not enough. Oh, there's not a north and south. I don't know if this is directly the other way. I have a feeling it's not because I think the geometry ends over here. Anyway, directly the other way from that line I just showed you is CERN, uh, Palatine Hill, um, Lago Averno and the first temple of Isis down on the Philae Island and there's even more down there. Hello to my French viewers. I didn't, I'm, I welcome you. I hope you can understand me. Probably you can understand me better than I could understand you. I, I've always wanted to speak French. And uh, I do want to study that again. So this is on the arm of the, the woman who's holding the weapon. This is on the arm. I don't know if it's going to let me zoom. Oh, it might let me zoom in. And I should know the name of this, but I've forgotten it. I think it's um, Napoleon, something to do with Napoleon. And I think there's some really nice places to visit in there. This is on the face of the larger Isis that's in Paris. So this is on the forehead. Let's zoom out and see where we are. So we were somewhere on that building. Oh yeah, it goes this way. So see, here's the face. Where were we? Oh yeah, we were right. We were on the nose. Yeah, that's, that I believe is part of the nose. Depends on which face view you take, but see, it would be right here. All right, so much to see here. All right, well, thanks for traveling with me, you guys. Talk to you soon. Love you.